Hey guys, this series is going to teach you in depth how the advanced brush settings work in Photoshop. In this video, I'm going to explain how the color dynamics settings work. Let's get started. For this example, I'll be using one of Photoshop's default brushes in the hard elliptical brush. I also have my foreground color set to red and my background color set to green. That way the changes we make can be seen more easily. Let's turn on color dynamics, and the first slider that you see is the foreground background jitter. I'm going to turn that up to 100% and click and drag to start painting on my canvas. As I paint, you'll see that each stroke is a single color, but every time I paint a new stroke, a different color is used. When you turn the foreground background jitter all the way up, Photoshop will randomly mix your foreground and background color. So every time I paint a stroke, I'm going to get something in between the red and the green that I have. If I check the box up here that says apply per tip, you'll notice that every element in my brush stroke is one of the colors that's in between my red and green down here. The hue jitter allows me to randomize the color of each stroke that I make. If I turn it up to about 20% and start painting on my canvas, you'll notice that each of my strokes is a slightly different color. But since I have it set to only 19%, they're all going to be pretty close to my original red. If I turn the hue jitter all the way up to 100%, I'm basically telling Photoshop that my strokes can be any color, as long as the saturation and brightness is the same as my original. The saturation jitter works in a similar way, except instead of affecting the hue, it only affects the saturation. If I turn that up to about 50%, you'll see that some of my brush strokes are a lot brighter than others but they all use the same red color. If I turn the saturation jitter all the way up, you'll notice that some of my strokes are bright red while others are almost completely gray. Next you'll see the brightness jitter slider. It's similar to the others except instead of affecting the color and the saturation, it affects only the brightness. So if I turn that up to about 50%, you'll notice that all my strokes are the same red color and they're all very saturated, but some of them are brighter than the others. Lastly, you'll see a purity slider at the bottom. This affects the overall saturation of all of my brush strokes. If I turn this down to negative 100%, you'll see that even though I have red selected as my color, all of my strokes are gray. If I take my purity slider up to a plus 100%, you'll notice that all of my strokes are going to be 100% saturated. Keep in mind that if you have the purity slider set to plus 100%, even if you turn the saturation jitter all the way up, all of your strokes are going to be 100% saturated. If I turn the purity slider down to about 50% and keep my saturation jitter at 100%, it's almost the same thing as turning my purity off and putting my saturation jitter to about 50%. By using a combination of these sliders along with some of the other effects, you can create some pretty realistic brushes. These can be used for things like grass and hair that need scatter effects but also needs variation in color. Check out the other videos in the Photoshop Brushes Advanced Features series to learn more. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.